Not adjust your dials. Welcome back to Black Sun Radio. Live aboard the Miss Hunter. This is round six of the PTL Open. As always, with your hosts, the maniacal droid, the insectoid droid, Forlom, and my bounty hunter partner and partner in crime. Mr. Rep with the Outlaw Tech, the Gan with the Master Plan, Zakus, aka best one point you can spend in this game. I disagree. Concur. So, <laughs> we're, let's get right up in there as our, our opponents, of uh, our players have already set up here. So you're going to see, hey, look at that. Uh, William changed into a new person. He's Evan now. Um, in case you were watching our previous matches, uh, we are seeing a repeat player because we're in the last round of Swiss now. We, we actually wanted to make sure we featured... Uh, a player on the left, Bohan, he's coming in from... London, Ontario. London, Ontario. Love that we've had some people travel in. And, lo and behold, look at what he's flying. What are these things? They're called TIE Fighters, and when you put a lot of them together, they call it a swarm. What if they all do? Apparently there was a rumor out there someplace that they were really, really good. And guess what? We have a special uh, a special treat for you right now. Why don't we have uh, PTL Big Boss and Ontario's uh, finest and resident, potentially best one player in our lower city, uh, tell us all about this uh, about this swarm, Devil. Uh, hey guys, so we've got Hellrunner with Crackshot, Muller Mythil with Crackshot, and Scourge with, with Crackshot, uh, backed up by uh, two Black Squadrons with Crackshot and Wampa. So Hellrunner gives everyone in range one a reroll. Muller Mythil gets to roll an extra dice at range one, so he shoots uh, four dice. At range one, which is pretty sweet. Scourge shoots uh, an extra uh, extra red dice if you've got a damage card on you. So she pairs well with Mauler Mythil. They're the same pilot skill. Where have we seen them last? Um, bottom tables? I'm not really sure. Oh, no. I was talking about how... <laughs> weren't they involved in the trench run at some point? Uh, so Mauler Mythil is the TIE fighter who freaks out and screws up Darth Vader. Uh, his friend, I think, Backstabber gets shot. I, okay. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, yeah, Scourge is made up from, Obviously. Yeah, I think it comes in the Galzanti, so I imagine he's a rebel expansion, a rebel, sh not rebel, good god, he's a, an imperial pilot in from rebels. Right. Uh, and Wampa, I believe is from some EU novels, and so what he, what he can do is he can cancel a crit to automatically do a damage under shields. Mm -hmm. Now that's great if you're facing regen aces, he's not in this match, but you get him near Poe and sort of chase him around. You got a one in eight chance of slipping something under, so. It's also kind of interesting that a well, fourteen point ship has the potential, if everything goes perfect, to kill a five thousand point Dengar over there. I mean, I was like, "Where's the third ship for the, for the scum Peritani three ships?" And I'm like, "Oh no, that's just none of them just, have mine, Link. That's just a sixty point Dengar." All and, right, well, and, and this is actually uh, Evan's kind of uh, bread and butter when it comes to list building. He yeah. really loves flying, really cost inefficient. Heavily loaded out, <laughs> awesome, yes, killer destroying scum lists, and he loves running scum two ship lists. He often flies scum two big base, uh, but obviously it's hard to not take Fenrau because Fenrau is Fenrau. Now he was an early adopter on the Dengaru bandwagon, correct for the Toronto regionals, not twenty seventeen but twenty sixteen. Correct, he was actually in the grand finals. And he was in the finals like, at. With against Spencer? Spencer? Yes, that's right. Spencer yeah. McClung, our yeah. previous multiple nationals and store champ and regionals winner. Uh, we miss you, Spencer. Please come back and destroy all of us. I think he's converted to Destiny. I'm not sure. Oh, yes, no. Has. Come back based that was Spencer. When your boy Forlot made one of the worst meta calls ever, his Denkaroo, that can't be good. <laughs> right, and there was two of them in the finals. I guess yeah. I was wrong. So Bohan's uh, maneuvering this pretty well, and uh, he reached out to me uh, actually a couple of months ago asking for swarm tips. He wanted to get them back on the table. So I've uh, I t sort of taught him how to wheel and, and how to keep him close, and uh, it's I don't know it's it uh, he's flown it a couple of times today I think mm -hmm. maybe uh, he's going for the the triple double he's flying everything twice nice so um, and why are we doing that again Devin uh, well we got two awards I think uh, for the triple double I forget what Tim actually called it but triple double is a better name that I can remember there you go uh, so if you fly each of your three lists twice mm -hmm. okay then you win, and you have the highest MOV. So the highest ranked player that does that mm -hmm. gets a set of templates. Right, and I think that's the K2SO Sportsman Award. That's right. Sure, I'm calling it the Triple Double because I can't remember that K2SO name. K2SO Sports Award, and those are actually the templates from the last regionals. regionals. Now, I bet K2SO would be amazing at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> He's got those arms. Yeah, exactly. He can get that Triple Double. I, I, I believe it. Yeah. Um, and then what we're going to do for the lowest ranked player 
who did went two 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 oh, through the whole day is we've got an extra set of Ontario's finest. Now I don't know if Samit's explained that already. We, have we actually haven't. We've been alluding you haven't, to you've it. Been, you've been alluding to it. Yeah, we're sharing. So for it. the three of us here, Spicy Curry, Samit, and I are uh, are all members of Ontario's finest. And you're a member of Ontario's finest if you went to Naboo and scrubbed out. Yeah. So if you got three wins or less at the Naboo Open, then uh, you're a member of Ontario's finest. And that means we all went in on, on getting custom templates and crypt tokens made that say Ontario. Ontario's finest in the cheesiest font we could. That's, it is just fancy. It's just fancy. It's so fancy. Pretentious is what yeah. it is. And it's important to note that the, te- the tokens are only critical damage tokens for your own ship. Yes. yes. So no, no focus, no evade. Just yes. you're taking damage, raw damage, it's bad. You're Ontario's finest. And the finest. templates are only range one and range two. No range three because it's less than three. We did. We did. That's right. We're the less than three. We squad. scrubbed out less than three squad. So let's let's talk about eighty point ten Gara. Yeah, something like that. Seventy. No, this is, actually, this is interesting. What Bohan's doing right now is he's leapfrogging the rear rank over the front rank. Now that's not something I have done. That's uh, that's a, what I'm trying to say. Is he's doing something very interesting right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure why he's evading. Um, in this situation, last round and this round, I would have, because he's not very close to the enemy, barrel, barrel rolled. rolled closer in so that you can get around those asteroids a little tighter and uh, and hunt Dengar. Because right now, well, Dengar might hard one, but had he barrel rolled the last turn, he'd be a little tighter. He could trap Dengar in there. So, uh, I don't know. He's on the top tables and I'm judging today, so let's, let's see how Bohan does. So you being our, our swarm expertise here... You're killing Dengar first. Is that is that the guy you have to kill? In this in this matchup, he's not going to give you Fen, right? So you fall back to your regular Dengar killing suggestions, which which, which is uh, don't shoot when you're in his arc, yep, and put damage on him when you can. So he's probably going to feed up Dengar and try and run, uh, and then come in with Fen to finish off the squad. Uh, so uh, I would try and kill whichever ship. He Evan him. gave me, right? In the end, killing Fen is of utmost priority. You've got a 60-point Dengar, right? So, 64 points. So, Bohan needs three TIE Fighters alive at the end, right? Two, if it's Howl Runner, to, to have more MOV than a half-point Dengar. But aren't you more worried about... Fen coming in and just completely munching your TIE Fighters? I mean, like, yeah, but look games. where Fen is. Fen's, he's not going to give you Fen. Right. Right? Yeah, that would be nice, but he hasn't barrel rolled into the center of the map. If you were in the center of the map. No, for sure. Right? If he'd barrel rolled in last round and then done a three bank in, or he would have plenty of pretty good shots on Dengar right now. So it looked like Evan is going to basically. It looks like he's setting up a hard one left uh, to Dengar's ship left, which would be green, which is going to proc k Force security droid. And it looks like he's going to try to basically go in and get aggro with uh, Dengar on the next turn. Uh, probably assuming that because of the formation, um, Bohan's formation right now, Devin, can, can he manage to hard one all of his swarm left without bumping? He's not going to hard one. So this is something that, that Bohan and I went back and forth on. Mm-hmm. And something that I'm really insistent on that's good for swarms is something called wheeling. Mm-hmm. So wheeling is where you do half of your ships, the you go with a hard one, and the other half of your ships, the hard three. So what you would do is you would hard one with four, six, and three. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Four and six would do a hard one. Mm-hmm. Five would do a hard one. Mm-hmm. Three, one, and two would do a hard three. Mm-hmm. And you can see that he would essentially pivot. Right. So basically half a base length up from number six is where the swarm would start and it would move sideways. Right. Right? From there. So you bring it in and that preserves your formation. Ooh, right? Nice Coming in the hits from Dengar. And he spends the evade. Spends so he's, the he's very turtled right now. Yeah. So he's, he's controlling the engagement, sort of trying to preserve the ties for an alpha strike. So, like I said, he's probably going to do... He's probably going to wheel in, right? And Dengar's going to do that hard one and be in front of everybody. But maybe Bohan thinks that he's willing to trade a, a black a black squadron pilot or how runner for... You know, that's he can tank two shots. Uh, maybe he just won't shoot with how runner and so that she doesn't get shot. And then Dengar has to choose whether to shoot Mauler, Mithil, or Scourge. So, it'll be certainly interesting to see... Um, how that's gonna how that's gonna go down next round? 
Scourge's ability probably isn't going to proc. Dengar's got four shields. You'd have to pretty much see perfect hits from Mauler and Howlrunner and zero evades from Evan to even get something close to, to damage on Hulk. You think so. side fighters are going to have... So if we're following your strategy and number four and number six are going to do the hard one, yeah. wouldn't we imagine that Evan is probably going to try to go too hard, ship left, and boost and barrel roll, get out of everyone's arc? Just hey, take he a might. Nice shot? Yeah, that's, he, that, is a, that is a danger. Don't forget he also oh. has unhinged astromech, so he could very easily throw out the three bank. Yeah, I'm worried about the rock, though, for Evan. Uh, for the three bank? He's yeah. He's fine, I think. You think he's fine? All well, right. I think it's hard to tell the distance. My money is on if he if he programs it. Evan's fairly certain he's gonna miss it. Yes, he, I agree with that. We also have Sunter Fell, right? Oh, not Sunter Fell, uh, Scum Sunter Fell, Fen Rao, aka he can, better Sunter Fell. Look, he can five forward. Yeah. Right, he's gonna push the limit. He can boost barrel roll through the rocks. Mm -hmm. He might have a range three shot next round as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, he looks like he's on the other side of the map, but that's a lie. He's really, you know, about no. to pound in. Right? Also, don't forget that Dengar also has boost barrel roll, and on a big base ship, anybody who's played with or against Dash can tell you, with a three-speed maneuver and a boost barrel roll action... He's wherever he wants to be. You are yeah. oh, you're across the board. Yes. So I think, does the... Uh, does Is Evan's call the, the thing you almost always want to do against a Howl Swarm, is you want to kill Howl before she... Yep. As soon as possible? You got I, it. I mean, let's be fair. I've flown a lot of swarms. Mm -hmm. The best players I've ever played against have never killed Tower on our first. Really? Yeah. And why is that? Uh, here's the wheel from Bohan, so let's see how he sets it up. Um, so, the what would normally happen against, say, if I'm playing Alan Fung or, or Duncan Howard or or Evan, even these these very. Okay. Maybe. Is that me or Victor? All right. And there continues. goes the big boss. To be continued. Uh, okay. For those of you at home, kill Howlrunner. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Listen these to are them. these swarm players trying to trick you into losing. That's kind of how I feel. I feel like Howlrunner's ability being able to give your entire brick of ties that offensive reroll yes. can take that two dice ship and actually make it scary, especially with the crack shot. I think that was the entire point behind the original uh, crack addict swarm. Is yes. that basically? They, yeah, sure, they only have two dice, but when you swarm eight of the six of them and they've all got almost a potential guaranteed single damage, that's a potential seven damage through. That's, for those of you keeping score at home, that's almost 75% of Dengar's life. That's right. So I think, I think, um, I'm hoping that, yeah, I think Evan might have seen this potential come in and I think yeah. he's going to blow past with Dengar. If he can get out, if he can clear some sort of a green maneuver and boost a barrel and get out of the way, uh, Boyan is just in a really bad spot. He's K-turning next turn and then Dengar is can K-turn as well and shoot missiles and stuff, It's it'll be a problematic thing, for sure. Well, don't forget, he could still potentially wheel. Okay, so he's also got his boost. So yeah, so he's going to boost, probably, ship left, and then barrel roll out, and he'll just be completely out of all of those guys' arc. First, he's going to take a free target lock. He'll take his he target wants, lock. If he wants to move it, right now he's got it, I believe, on on one of the blacks in the back there, on the crack blacks back there. Yep, that's so right. So for those of you keeping track at home, in case you're not learning, Bohan's being, uh, helping us identify which one Hellrunner is by... She's reclaimed the captured tie from Sabine. Yep. Just to, just to make our big boss here mad now that Sabine is finally a part of the Imperials. Uh, yeah, I'm back. So he did a soft two with Dengar? Two bank. Two bank, two bank yeah. Clear stress, and yep. now he's deciding if he wants to push for a boost barrel roll, if he just wants to... Now, what about a... Well, I was going to I was gonna finish off where yep. I left, uh, left off there. So what I was saying is um, they don't pick off Howrunner. So what they do is they'll stay on the edge of the swarm. You know, I run Howrunner pretty tight. It's tough to uh, to get to her, so they end up staying on the edge, picking off the, the the ties on the side. Nick does this with his dash too, yep. right? You'll you'll just you'll I'll be struggling trying to keep these reposition aces in arc, you know, trying to find trying to joust the defenders, and then you'll stand up all of a sudden you've got three or four ships left, and you're like, well, I'm having massive problems right now. Yeah, you're always going to want to engage the tie swarm one on one if possible, uh, so you don't get you know six or eight guys shooting back at you. Uh, if you, if your mm -hmm. opponent is foolish enough to let let you pick off Howlrunner while being, you know, the one-on-one -on -one or maybe two-on-one, -on -one, then I think that's an okay position. But definitely don't just joust in there to kill Howlrunner because, you know, Howlrunner is giving your opponent advantage. I mean, if your opponent's only getting the one reroll because it's a one-on-one -on -one engagement, you're laughing. You're feeling okay about that. So those of you at home are confused earlier on uh, how Bohan moved his Howlrunner first. The, both players agreed that for the simplicity's sake of the swarm that he could move it out of sequence that one time just because it was a lot cleaner and easier. Yeah. I also want to comment that I, before I 
uh, before, before we went back to finish Devin's point, I was I was gonna say I was hoping that he was gonna do the bank boost with his um, Dengar where he, where Evan did, yep. because as you can see, he's basically dancing around and drifting around the entire swarm, dodging arcs, and he's lining up range one kill shots with with Dengar. Which, I mean, with that advanced proton torpedo, something's dying. With the K4 security droid, and if he if he stims, something's dying. Like, and at all this time. Rao is out there like a great white that he is, waiting for the opportunity to come through and bound through yeah. and take th take down one of these TIE fighters like a seal. So and Evan, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Evan plays Fen very similar to how I play Fen. So I like to dance Fen at range three. So next turn, Bohan will be like, we got to kill Fen, this is my chance. So he'll joust in there and then Fen will just go the opposite way and run away. And then you've just like completely put yourself out of position. Dengar is now behind you shooting and laughing. It's, it's Dengar good. also has limited options here. He's stressed. He's got to go left. He didn't do any damage this round. He actually is unhinged. He could do a three bank to the right and then barrel roll. All right, but that's not... He wants to engage the swarm. Absolutely. You can see what he's doing with Dengar, right? Yeah, absolutely. So he's in a difficult position because Bohan can wheel again, right? Four and five can hard one. Six can hard three. Two hard ones. One and three hard three. And he preserves, this, he preserves the formation, brings it around, and he's turning on the spot again. Cool. And if Dengar does a hard one, hard two in... You know, they're, they're all going to be at range one, and Dengar's probably going to delete somebody with an advanced proton torpedo. He's probably going to delete two when they fire back at him, and he well, gets, and he pops glitters yeah. to him, and then... If he wheels, though. And if and if he wheels, and, and Evan programs the hard two with Fen, Fen's going to yeah. come in and, and sideswipe something else. Yep. Bohan could lose three ties in one round. Yep, that's absolutely what can happen. There's something that uh, Christian and I call tie-itis, uh, and that's when TIE fighters just disappear. They get sick. Mm. There's so much red dice, they get pox, and they just go poof. And, it's their uh, first day on the job. Yeah. What are we talking about? Those are crack blacks. Those are, those are, those are blacks. Right. fly with Vader. That's Wampa. This is an experienced TIE Swarm. <laughs> There's no academies in this. Also, this European is, style crack swarm. These are also our current uh, third and fourth place players? Or? This is, uh, yeah, third and fourth place players. I believe Evan is. Uh, I don't I can't remember which one's which, so I'm not going to lie on stream. I'm uh, not yeah, going to make something up. I, don't know. I think Bohan's in third right now. I think? I don't know. Just try not to give home field advantage to Evan. That's right. So we talked about the options. We, we should maybe touch on the on the list over here. We keep making jokes about that sixty four point Dengar, but um, we should talk about exactly what it is it's doing. So you don't often see Dengar with PTL. Um, nope. uh, I mean, this might have been a situation. Where it might have been interesting to see a lone wolf variant of it. But with that uh, engine upgrade and the unhinged astromech, PTL does actually make a lot of sense. It. Yep. it, it it already fits in naturally with the way Evan's going to be playing that Dengar. He's probably going to use him instead of sticking him in the face and just fighting and saying, come at me. I kind of feel like he might want to um, strafe by, pick off a TIE fighter, that's right. get out of town, reset, come back in again, and just do strafing runs. And again, that's also what Fen does. If you're not careful, he comes in from the side, he just sideswipes one of your ships, blows that out of the water, and then four straights and says, peace out, I'm yep. done. It's a very good potential this turn to just try to run circles around them. Mm -hmm. So we can do the same thing very similar to last turn if they if the swarm wheels and he could two bank in do the boost in the barrel roll and you might even be in range one of one of those guys and that would be a solid turn to get get one of those ties off the table so do you think evan is going to hard one left or do you think he's going to do the two bank green left i think he'd do the two bank i think so too because that way if the wheel the swarm wheels like devin was saying he's got that range with the boost barrel roll to potentially dodge arcs again yes and then he's pulled the swarm out of our out of range for that Fenrau hard to left, and then left. worst case, if the swarm was to, you know, maybe try something different in K turn, he's still going to be in range three, or maybe even farther if he could barrel out of the way. How about a three bank or four forward after Fenrau? That's the, uh, that was actually what I was just going to ask you. Would you say, would you show, kind of try to take a take a take a trick now here and take your swarm and go after Fenrau, thinking that he's going to try coming in? Yeah, you'll lose potentially one time, and Concord Don title is going to be strong in the situation, but. That's a lot of crack shots. It's a I lot of TIE Fighters, especially with if he can keep Hellrunner alive. He could burn down Fenrau in that turn. I think you're not going to see Evan. Evan's a very experienced player. I don't think he's going to be crazy enough to do the hard two this turn. Okay. I think he's going to play it safe, probably do the four or five straight. That's okay. that's interesting. Okay. That's what I would do, because no matter where that swarm goes, I think Fenn's Bohan's going to try to block the hard, hard one and hard two escape. It looks like what he's trying to do. He's trying to block... That he needs to be all... Yeah, there we go. He's be all the way forward. Yeah, that's that's that's... But you won't block the two bank. I no, don't he's think. blocking the hard one left. Is what right. he's going for. That right. would probably and the hard two. That would probably mean yeah. Hard, hard two's two not. It's not green on his not green. The jump master. So you have to do the two bank. Yeah, you have to do the two bank or the yeah. three bank. Yeah. Which would clear. Oh, it's going back. So oh, that that doesn't block it. Oh, it blocks. The oh, block the hard one. You're not going to block any of the bank. So. 
Got to make sure you're in a good position for next turn. If he wheels forward, he lost the one bank left. Ship left. Yeah, but I don't think Evan would do the one bank. It wouldn't make a whole lot no, of sense. No, I don't think he's doing it either. I think I, th I think strongly you're going to see Evan doing the two bank. The hard three barrel roll is one of the most powerful, you know, yeah. maneuvers that the TIE Fighter can do in terms of blocking. But yeah. based on that maneuver from Bohan, it's pretty safe to assume that what you said is going to happen. We're going to see all the TIE Fighters shift. Yeah. He's trying to set up a kill box for Fen. And, and you know what? If Evan did the hard one left, Bohan yep. might take... He just might take Dengar down this turn. You could kill Dengar in one turn if that happens, for sure. It would be a very... Very chancy maneuver on Evan's part to do the hard one. You'd have to be pretty certain that he's going after your friend Rao. That's true, but he would clear stress and he can always glitter stim, so he would just have that infinite focus. But he would also get the K4 security orb even from the bump, so he is still going to evaporate one ship with the advanced proton torpedo. So it is it is risky in theme, but it might not be all that risky. because That's true. Again, that's the power of Dengar. Forward, forward arc against low health ships. I mean, he, he eats them for breakfast. So Which we'll see. We'll see what he did. And the two bank. Two bank, yeah. yeah. It's just a safer maneuver. You got a 64 point ship. Do you really want to take any chances like that? Absolutely. Like, it, it might not be a bad, it might not work out poorly, but this is like guaranteed. You're going to do a boost this turn. You're going to grab a focus. He's also going to get a target lock from his K4, so I think he's going to probably boost forward and try to take Hellrunner. Yeah, 100%. That would be your your way to go. Again, I know that's what I would go for. I, yep. know, I know he's not saying you shouldn't, but yeah. No, you're not gonna you're not gonna go for Hal Runner unless it's an advantageous turn. And he's now in an advantageous it's, it's position. It. Right? Yeah, you're not gonna joust in on six guys and hope you can kill Hal Runner. You know what I mean? But Evan's actually thinking about it, whether or not he wants to do it. So this is a situation where I actually really do hope he did the hard two ship left with Fen Rao, because then we're gonna see something spicy. Yeah, this is not gonna be a great turn for Bowie. Yeah, he is calling. He is calling the bank boost. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. So bank boost. You go. got it. No and one's shooting you. I assume he's gonna push for the focus. Oh, does he not clear? Oh, does that go off the board? So, he should be able to barrel roll still. It's just, so, I mean, he's not going to have the focus that he wants. But that's still but okay. He he's not in a bad position at all. The four dice is still going to be problematic for, for poor little Hal Runner. And, but he's in, more arcs. Back. he's in more arcs now. Yes, right? but with the boost, he'll be gone. And he glitter sims this turn. Would, he gl would you glitter sim for the double stress? Oh, he's just going to boot barrel yeah, again. Just barrel out of the way. And therein lies the power of PTL on Dengar. Yep, just like Dash. With that K4 and that uh, and that unhinged Astro, it's that was that was quite solid. We thought that was going to be pretty bad, and all of a sudden, no. It, at the cost of a focus token, Evan is in a very comes. comfortable position. Nick and I, Nick and I saw it coming. Nick's the so. Dash player. He uh, Forlam likes his Dash. He knows that's what you got to do. You just dance around them, take your time. So you're, them not, off. so you're not getting a range one here. Do you bother boosting, or do you just stay at range three for better positioning and options? I think you go turn? for the better positioning for next turn. Uh, do you target lock focus, or do you just target lock? Like, do you push? I probably would push. I'd be okay with the push. Because then he can wheel the entire swarm around to the right, and then, well, you know what? Dengar can just, oh, no, okay. He's he done. can hard one them all up board. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's not the worst idea in the world, but then, but Fen's going to be gone. Yes, because right? he like, can just bang. He can just hard two to the right, or he can three straight. To be honest, uh, a K turn from everybody might not be the end of the world, should they survive this round. I mean, he's going to lose... Probably one. at least one of one. his Pascal sevens and one and Hal Runner. So well, no. he's decided that Hal Runner is going to be the shot, so that's the Dengar range one. Oh, and he doesn't even need anything. Oh, no, those are all eyes. Oh, oh two hits. Two hits. Okay, Howl so we're looking at spend, using the focus yes, for two of eight. Then focus two of eight. Comes the Fen Rao shot. That's what. That's good. That's good for Bohan. Yeah, hundred percent. Not taking any damage on her. It was a great option. Fen Rao shooting uh, Hal Runner. Just push him out of the way. That's all you got to do. Yeah, it's fine. The disrespect from the scum players to see that. <laughs> Little Imperial ships. This is Fen Rao's turn. Yeah. Okay, and that's and what you want to see. Hot fire. Four dice, Ooh, nothing. Not oh, us. Nice. And bye bye. There goes uh, Trader Sabine there. And welcome to Swarm Life. That's frustrating. Swarm Life. That's... Yeah. I mean, if he'd taken two and saved the focus, which is probably what I would have done, um, to spend it on the four dice against uh, Fen Rao. But he still would have died there. He would have spent two and... Still would have taken the hit crit, potentially blown up anyways. Uh, yeah. So that was actually, all things considered, even though he blanked out with his Dengar, that was a huge turn for, for Evan. To, yeah. have, to have cut down... Bye, guys. Bye, take boss care, man. So to, to have cut to have cut Hal Runner out in the first round of engagement, that kind of cuts the wing, cut the leg, legs out a little bit of uh, <laughs> Bohan's list there. Um, he, I mean, he still does have, what, one, two, three, four, five crack shots on yeah. the table? But, I mean, the initial joust Four, sorry, with the reroll and all the crack shots is a very powerful joust. Um, without the rerolls now, you're just hoping that you get the two hits. And, I mean, and more importantly, you just lost 
a sixth of your list, a little bit more in terms of points, but in terms of model count, and Evan hasn't taken a damage yet. Yeah, and Howl Runner is so important to a swarm. She's right. she's integral to the way the swarm operates, like the way she's able to to keep. Like we were saying earlier, she's almost she is the linchpin in any crack swarm. So it's probably safe to say this turn we're going a very very casual one turn from Dengar. Clear your stress. Absolutely, there's no um, need for you to do anything more complicated. He's in a great position; they can hard one again. Uh, ship left and just bring his forward arc to bear on something. Uh, and we were talking about we're not against the the Tie Fighters have a three K, don't they? Or the they Fighters, have a four. They have a four K. So you, are, are you thinking you see all four Ks? I think you're probably gonna see probably just see the one turns, hoping that Fenrau disengages the other way. And if he does the two turn and you did the one turn, so if he does, sorry, let's let's make that specific. Okay. So people understand what I'm let's, talking yeah, about. Yeah, let's do board directions. Um, if Fenrau does the two turn ship right mm -hmm. towards the Tie Fighters and all the Tie Fighters do a one turn, he's probably just gonna bump and then you're gonna have a ton of range one shots and you might be able to wipe him off the table. Yep. Um, and if he was to disengage and do the hard two ship left, yeah. you might be able to shoot him in range three. Correct. So with all that information said, if you're Evan, do you not just do a three straight or a, th or a two bank with, with Fen and then do the boost barrel and uh, ship left and just disappear? I probably myself would do the two turn and see if I can't barrel roll and boost uh, off away. Okay, the two turn ship left. Because you still have the auto thrusters and they're, they're not guaranteed to do two hits because they, they only have a focus. I think you're right. I think with an auto thruster capable ship, the three evade die, I think I get into range three and just take my dice, my chances on dice because they are just TIE fight. Then again, they're crack shot TIE fighters. Yeah, but you're definitely going to lose another one before it shoots if they turn that way. Dengar is going to turn, grab his target lock, do a barrel roll, take a focus, and hit somebody with an advanced proton torpedo. Yes. Which is range one, if I recall. It is, and I believe it's five dice, and you can turn all your blanks to eyes, or three blanks right. to eyes. That's right, so you might not even need to take a focus then. So the reason why this build is really interesting on Evan's ship right here is that you can see the interaction with Advanced Proton Torpedo and Glitter Stream is really cool. Yep. If he gets into a situation where he gets his Dengar put in range one, he can just say, you know what, fine, uh, and just, just you know, yep. sniff a little bit of the funny stuff and just be like, come at me with his range one shots. His, re his return fire ability, and his infinite focus with Glitter Stim. It's, right. it's really cool setup. Yeah, I've seen him fly this list at a couple of events, and uh, I was first kind of like, this is what we were talking about today. We're like, ah, 64 points, that's silly. And then I saw the Dengar, and I'm like, this is almost a dash level Dengar. It's got all sorts of tricks. It's it's pretty scary, and you can't discount Fen Rao. He's not a lot of points, only 35 points where he is. He's a 35 point auto. It's just a disaster, too. It's just two ships you don't want to deal with, and you can't leave till the end. You can't leave Fen Rao alone. Yeah. Like, you don't want to leave him alone when he has Mind League and he's the last ship. Yeah. He's going to annihilate these TIE Fighters. I've beaten three or four TIE Fighters with just Mind League Fen. He's doing one action a turn. You get in range one, and they don't, you don't care. That's exactly it. He's often, he's, he's often uh, these really high skill ceiling ships like the like the Fen Rao's and the, the Sooner Fells in the days past. One damage on one damage left or four damage left is almost always the same thing. It's it's either they're dead or they're alive. They're still so potent when they even have one health left. It's really yeah. not a, it's almost never a scary situation with them because I feel like with your Fen you're either going to die or mm -hmm. you're gonna be alive forever in Wreck Shop. And and you can either you're gonna use him super defensively or you're gonna just use him like a like a spearhead and have him go directly in. So Fen does take a little more damage than Sunterfell did because he doesn't get the evade token. Of course. But even still, he has one more health. So I think it's a fair trade-off, especially for that offensive capabilities that Sunterfell never had. I was always partial to the stealth device and people will roll their eyes at me sometimes, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, a five dice is powerful. That means if he gets five hits, Bowen has to get three evades to not die. But the difference is that uh, while Fen does take more damage than Sunterfell ever did, he also... Deals more damage. Than That's correct. Ever did. Unless you're running targeting computer sooner, fell, you were never getting the terrifying output that you get out of. That's fan. right. That's exactly it. It's, I think it's a very fair trade. He's a very knife edge fighter. Yep. Um, there's many a time when you feel like a god flying sooner. Oh, sorry, flying um, yes. Fenrau. And there's many times when he goes out with a whimper. Yep. Oh, here's my range two TLT shot. Just you're dead, done. And yep. He does nothing. So he's a he's a very knife edge risky fighter. So maybe we were mistaken. No, let's just say he did a hard. He did a two turn. He did a two turn, which is apparently green on a. Oh, uh, to the left it is. So there you go. So he's going to clear his stress. He's going to barrel roll. Uh, I think he's thinking about getting that, taking that range one. So I think now at this point he's going after Mauler. Uh, looks like it. Well, that's the only one that he would have been able to barrel roll into range one of. Uh, is that range one or do you think that might be range two? No, I think that's range one. Uh, remember that the missile is only range one. Okay, so then he is going to push for the focus then, which is what he's done, which means it does look like... And there he goes. Here comes the two turn. The two turn was a good call. Again, if he was to barrel roll ship right and boost, he's just gone. Uh, he doesn't even need to boost. He doesn't even need to boost. Just a barrel roll ship right uh, from the front of his ship, yep. and then he's You're out gone. of all arcs. In fact, he could barrel roll uh, back of his ship to keep tightness. Yeah, and that's what he's going to do. 
I don't think he needs to push here. I think he. I think he probably just sit where it's at. Well, I mean, he does have. I the think options. he's gonna have number six. Might have a shot. So he will probably push. But he K turn. He K turns. So he doesn't have any actions, and mm -hmm. you have an off thruster. So you're feeling okay on that shot if you if you don't want. To... But he does have. But he does have crack shot. And if, Evan, and if Evan's playing the win, he might just be like, you know what, I'm going to comp I'm going to push, and I'm going to take the focus, and I'm going to guarantee my safety. Or maybe he feels confident. He's checking arcs right now to see where everything's at. Yep. I mean, Bohan put himself in a weird position as well with uh, splitting the swarm up. So, there you go. Fen has decided not to push, so that means he's going to be able to do uh, a one turn next turn. Uh, or, importantly, a Talon roll if your opponent decides they want to zoom Here in there. Here they come. Advanced Proton Torpedoes. Yep. Here comes to five dice. Yeah. All right. Didn't Oof. even need to use anything else. Uh, he's got a five dice, five hits. Got, he has no blanks to turn. No, he's got four hits. There's one eye. He's deciding whether or not to focus, which I think you, yes, you definitely do for an absolutely there goes evaporated tie fighter. mauler. Yeah, you, need, you need to make two evades naturally on those dice to not die from that shot. No, because he did five damage. And then evade token. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, and it's partial to taking the evade tokens, which really limits your offensive capabilities. <clears throat> But it is a good way to potentially keep your... You need to keep your TIE Fighters live. You can't have turns where you lose one TIE Fighter a turn. Yeah. Or else by the next the next TIE Fighter that goes, it's you're in huge, huge hot water, right? Absolutely. So the TIE Swarm is very yep. much one of those there things goes. where... That guy's taking a shot. And we're... Oh! Oh, Bohan's dice need to give Dice from the Dice God. Yeah, and you could, I think Dohan's, Bohan's decided to use two different dice. Switch, <laughs> I would switch dice. i throw those ones in the garbage. You know, I've done that. <laughs> I'm not... I've thrown a die across the room before, too, but that was in D&D, so I don't feel as bad. The fickle D20. So, so here's the thing. Here's the situation. What are we looking at here? What does Bohan do to get himself back into this game? He's got to tighten the swarm up. He still has three crack shots, so it's still that can still do some damage. He has the potential to kill Fen Rao still in turn, which is going to be difficult. Actually, in this situation, if you're if you're Evan, hmm? do you even bother bringing? Do you even try to do turn tightly to bring? fan into this game or do nope. you just three bank and blast them out and be like peace I'll come back next round yeah I'd probably just run away he's uh he's very much a get in there take the range one run away take your time turn around come back that's how you keep them alive keeping them safe that's it that's how but you, you see I, I would I would be inclined to want to do the hard one uh, ship left with fan round then barrel and push for a target lock just to get something in five days nuke I, 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 I know it's the aggressive and <laughs> angle way and it's not what you should be doing but you know it's one of those things where I kind of feel like that's the way I like to fly Fen Rao. I do too, because you, you want, it's fun to throw those five dice. It is. But you got to play him safe. He can pop in a turn. It's happened to me many of times. I think we're going to uh, see a one bank uh, ship left with the Angar to clear stress or a one straight. Yeah, I feel like the one turn is probably pretty good. I mean, you're going to grab a target lock. You always have the potential for the glitter stem, so you don't even care if you bump, really. That's exactly it. With and the then, unhinged, you don't care about bumping. That's and I don't I like. think Bowen's going to K turn uh, number three and five. So you're, my, you're probably feeling okay. Well, I feel like you're going to see uh, one turn with five and then maybe two tur two straight or three straight with six to kind of like lock them all back up again. And then a, a two straight with a clear stress on four. And if my positioning is right, that lines them up into a beautiful column. Mm -hmm. And then it's just three, uh, which is uh, Scourge, who is kind of out there. Yeah, he's just in a spot. It's... The 4K will land him on a rock, looks like. Yes. It's not going to be where you want to be. So he's going to do three hard, hard three then, probably? Well, that's just a hard one. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, a TIE Fighter is probably not going to do anything to, to... You know, there's also the potential that number three can do a three bank and barrel and try to block Fen if Fen was going to turn. And then you have your TIE Fighters come up in the same direction, grab a focus, and hopefully you can catch him in range two with his pants down. I mean, it'll give it'll give Evan a nice spicy, possibly range one shot again with Dangar. But you have to wipe one of these ships off the table if you're going to have any chance of, of winning this game. That's true. They're talking about spicy. What about a talent roll from Ben? I mean, that that's why I imagined he didn't stress it out. Because if he's going to go for that maneuver, you're going to go into range one. And when Fen's in range one, he is king. Mm -hmm. That means his title automatically cancels Bowen's crack shot. Mm -hmm. Which means that Bowen's going to have to get two hits or three hits versus Fen Rao's four dice at mm -hmm. range one. Mm -hmm. and it's so much work to kill him. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing basically is basically the types of ships and upgrades that have essentially chased uh, swarms out of the game. Yeah, you really have to catch catch Fen Rao and kill him very early in this game because mm -hmm. at the end of the game, even if Dengar was to fall off the table this turn magically, I've killed more than four Tie Fighters with Fen Rao. You really need to be able to bump him, or you got to get him at a range two engagement. And a player of Evan's caliber is probably not going to give you a range two engagement with Fen. It's tricky too because it's very. Um, 
you just want to bump them. Mm -hmm. get, get rid of those actions. You want to bump them, but it, oh, it doesn't always do as much as you think it does. Because he still has he still has his title and stuff. So I've had an instance where there's two or three TIE Fighters, and the first one bumps me, leaving one or two to shoot me, and then he's like, oh, I just can't put the damage through. Mm -hmm. And then, then you kill one of them. You know, it's problematic. And you can see Bohan's really trying to figure out what to do here. He's, he's spending his time thinking this through. Again, like, this is... This is not an easy situation to be in. He's been playing it really well, and it, I know sometimes when you see uh, Swarms come up against Dengar, it, it, it doesn't look like the, the Swarm player is, is capable, but that's not the case here. He's flying information quite nicely. He's, he's putting arcs where they need to be. He's barrel rolling where he can. It's just Evan's anticipating a lot of those maneuvers, and, and the boost barrel roll action on that Dengar is huge. Yes. That's why we talk about uh, going back to the initial um, when Deng Dengaru kind of blew up on the scene the, over a year ago at our Canadian Regionals when both Evan and Spencer took it to finals. Um, they both, uh, Spencer actually had boost barrel roll on Manaru and that was the first time I got I got yes. to love I got the lovely opportunity of getting crushed by Spencer that game and it was the first time I'd ever seen these upgrades and I took one list the way he talked about what Manaru could do, and he said she has a boost barrel roll and does a speed three, and I'm like, that's fast. I'm never catching you. And I was flying interceptors. Yep. I couldn't catch him. It's it's tricky. The big ship of boost barrel roll. I mean, that's why Dash was so powerful. Yeah. When uh, I mean, Wave 5 came around, and they dropped my favorite EU character, Dash, and I was like, I don't think I could ever lose to these TIE Fighters. I'm going faster than they could possibly ever go. We're always in range three. Or I'm out of arc. I'm throwing four dice. And that's it. We re... We we uh, joke about, or not joke about, but we mention how Interceptors and the uh, Protector Starfighters and the A-Wings are screaming fast ships. They are, but you don't really think about the fact that a big base ship with a green three bank, or any bank that isn't green, and the ability to boost and barrel roll, or barrel roll, is incredibly faster. As we saw with Dash, as we saw with the Jumpmaster when you added the uh, boost engine upgrade to it, and as we've seen with Ketsu or or any Protector, any, sorry, any Shadow Caster, that has a engine upgrade on it, they're lightning quick. Yeah, absolutely. And the OG badass, the Falcon, baby. The and they're maneuverable. The We're talking a big base ship right now that is just as maneuverable as a Sunterfell. Absolutely. And then if you can maneuver it like you can an Interceptor, yeah. you're you're basically like you're almost like on God mode. And you're sitting at PS9, so there's no chance you can ever really get you don't get to see what he's going to do ahead of time. Yeah. Ooh, so here comes a two straight. That's an interesting interesting maneuver. What, what do you think the thought process is? He's just trying to reform. You're yeah, not going to get a shot here. I wonder if I guess he does feel like he's. I guess he's going to try to pursue Fen all the way down the board because I think he assumes that Fen's going to probably do. Uh, a ship left maneuver, uh, which would make the most sense, and he's trying to block the the one left, one bank, and the one hard. And yeah, I don't know about that because now if, if he was to do it and block, he would just be in range one of of number four, and again target well, lock, glitter stem. My only thought process then is that he's gonna he's gonna hard one. Okay, there we go. So he's probably gonna do the same two turn uh, or three turn uh, ship right next round to reform his swarm. So if. Evan flips up that Talon roll. This is not good for Bohan. Uh, I kind of hope he does, only because it's always fun to see the Talon roll maneuver. It's so cool. Yeah, and as great. much as as much as we make jokes about it, uh, it's always nice to see Fenra do Fenra things. He's he's pretty. It's fun to roll like dice, the dice. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, there we go. Okay, so maybe so Bohan sees that this potential option, and he's trying to give himself that option. He's cutting off both. What he's doing is he looks like he's cutting off both angles. Okay, so here comes the two turn. Yeah, and three, okay. Oh, three turn, oh, okay. So he's not Talon rolling, he's just going to do the easy thing. And at this point now... Do you barrel roll back, uh, ship left, and you boost? You don't need to. Well, just, you would take a shot at, at uh, number five if you went back and boosted. And right, probably no one's shooting you back. I think at this point he stays where he is, where he barrel rolls to ship right, so he can set up a hard one. Oh, he's going to check for a target lock, and okay, so yeah, he's setting so he's up his next lock. round turn. It's like no one's shooting him back, so he's sitting yeah. pretty in a nice spot there. I would be surprised if Evan pushes on this one. Oh, he is pushing, okay. Fair enough, so he's going to get himself that range so that he can do the hard two next round for a ship left. And if something comes close, or he'll be at range three for it. You guys got time for a fun fact? Yes. Okay, fun fact about the PTO. Ooh, good bump there. Is that a bump? No, it's, it's, I don't know if that, if it's a good bump there. We were saying, because now he's just going to do a green maneuver, grab a target lock, glitter stem, and kill that guy. Sure. Well, we'll see. He doesn't need the stem. He won't stem. There's no point here. Fun Only fact. Yep. Over half of the players today, mm -hmm. or it was roughly 50-50, okay? All but one of the players ran their three lists. Nice. Half of those, so half of the tournament, went 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Wow. That's there awesome. you go, boys. That's amazing. So the That is a ladies. PTL tournament. That is fantastic. So the format proved out. 
Oh man, everybody loves it. So it's tur great. turns out when you offer regional templates as a bounty, people try to get them. Who thought? <laughs> so he's grabbing a Sargalock here. Oh, well, that he is Glitter Stamp. Yeah. I think it was a good turn for Glitter Stamp. Dead ships on the board. I mean, if he kills this TIE Fighter before it shoots, that means he's killed three ships and hasn't taken the damage yet. And if he somehow doesn't manage to kill that TIE Fighter, he's, he's now good. used Glitter Stamp as a defensive role because now do you even bother to return fire? And that's yeah, four hits. four hits. And so he's taking the focus. He's only taking one. One damage. Um, so if you're Bohan, do you take the shot knowing that Dengar yeah. is going to shoot back? On the floor. Yeah. Uh, I think... I don't. Ah, oh, this got is one of those there. things. This is this is the, this is just the brutality. But of if Dengar. you don't shoot him back, that means again he hasn't taken any damage. I know. I Evan think, is up. I mean, he, it's a range one unmodded shot, and, and his ability procs whether or not you hit. It doesn't matter whether or not you hit. It's when you attack. That's right. And it looks like Bohan's opted to say nope. Yeah, please. you're not going to take the shot. It's probably not going to do any damage. Range one glitters him another four dice. You can't. I don't think so. That's you're just basically giving him a tie fighter for maybe one damage. It's true. It doesn't seem worth it. But at some point, you got to get some damage on the table here. Yes. It's, again, this is this is by no stretch of the imagination an easy situation for Bohan to be in. He's he's definitely fighting his back up against the wall. Again, losing losing Howl so early um, is, is painful. And then Dengar is showing us exactly why it's very difficult to fly swarms in the current meta. He's just built to destroy swarms. And Evan has built this Dengar... To be nasty, there has there isn't a there isn't I mean, a whole I think lot this of Dengar is even nastier than the Lone Wolf Dengar. I think so as well, but there isn't a whole lot of boost barrel roll big ships in the meta. Either, no, there right? really isn't. That's true, and you don't expect to see that in the swarm again with um with with the changes to uh, Manaru and then and, and some of those things. It it does feel like it's a good chance to bring the swarm back, and I kind of feel like almost any other list. Against against this table, Bohan would have been in a phenomenal place. Mm -hmm. it, it's just that, um, you know, swarms are in. It's a natural predator. Like Dengar is a natural predator for swarms. Yep, you got it. So where are you going if you're Evan this turn? Is this the turn to disengage? Going absolutely. I think what you do is you cycle out. You do a two bank or three bank left with with uh, Dengar, and you bring Fen Rao in on the flank. See, I love what's happening here when playing like that. Where now you switch who's attacking and who's defending. Yeah. Dengar goes maybe three straight and boost, and you're gone. That's the power of a well properly built two ship list. Is that you both your both when both your ships are strikers basically, uh, you can cycle them out right. You draw away, but. Bohan is hedging his bets. He's, he's splitting up his forces, which is typically the thing you don't do with a swarm, but he kind of has to. So so oh, actually, yeah. it looks like Evan is just going to take the defensive approach. I bet you we'll probably see... Uh, I don't think he's going to do the one bank ship left boost to go towards that rock. I think he might barrel roll ship right out for max range and then token up and then say, good luck trying to hit me with focus auto thrusters. Yeah, I mean, that's reasonable. I mean, uh, crack shot is a thing, but you know what? To... Two damage is is not all that much to be worried about on Deng no. on, on Fenrao. I think then he could hard to uh, ship left next turn and, and delete a ship because now Bohan's kind of locked into doing um, uh, Banks ship right with uh, that crack black. Mm -hmm. Unless he just wants to fly directly over. Oh, he's gonna do the exact opposite. I love Wait. it. Yes. And then if you make the boost, you probably get out of the range of number three, and then you're just. You're going to terrify and destroy number five. What are you going to do? Especially if Dengar's just going to run away. Maybe he does a three straight. Mm -hmm. That means both of your guys are super close. Yeah, and that's some nice positioning. So I won't lie to you. I didn't expect that move from Evan. I'm not not to say that he's like a, a defensive player by any stretch of imagination. He's, he's a, incredibly calculated when he mm -hmm. flies. I've had the pleasure of flying against him quite a few times. He's a phenomenal player, as we've seen on the stream twice today. Yep. But he's, he's so good because he's always so sure of what he's doing. I mean, that's a great call there. I mean, Fenrir's going to take two shots, probably, if dice go his favor, only taking one shot. He's probably taking oh, one shot. Oh, see, this is smart. So what he's going to do right now is he's going to soften that ship up with Dengar, yep. and then probably with PS kill him with, with Fenrir. That's right. And he's going to take one shot. But that's going to be a range two shot. Remember, he took the target lock last turn, so... Yeah, and now he's going to probably push for a barrel roll. <laughs> okay. I mean, he could barrel roll into range one. Yeah. <coughs> Um, I don't know if that's advantageous or not. No, because then it's hard one to the right. Oh, no, he could barrel. He already pushed the limit. Yeah. He boosted a target lock. So he was going for the range one shot. Just which out of range looks one. Like just side. out of range one, yeah. And is it going to be obstructed or unobstructed? It's definitely obstructed. Yeah, because the little, the little lip right there of that rock is. So there. you're still throwing eight dice at that TIE fighter this turn. I mean, let's face it, uh, that crack is dead. I don't know. It's going to be unmodded from, from Ben, though. Well, in the interest of uh, us having a real game to watch here, let's, let's hope uh, something spicy happens, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right, here comes. Uh, I mean, that's just too much damage. 
Just stab. Okay, so two hits, just, two crits. Just stab. Dengar. Oh, Ooh, that's so what you want to see. So crit going through on TIE Fighter. Hopefully we don't see the double damage. And hopefully it's not major explosion to a direct uh, hit. Live One. update here will tell us what it was. Momentarily. And, Ooh. I mean, here comes five dice from Fenrir now. Console fire. Console fire. That might not even be an issue because yeah. he might not be alive next round. He did sure. not have to spend focus for that. Uh, he rolled three natural of eights, uh, so he still has focus. In case that's what they're co commenting on. No, it's under the number five. Yes, yeah, I'm saying. I think that's what they're discussing with. Did he focus on the one? He did not have to use focus. Yeah, he right. three natural of eights. So we're just uh, making sure that Bohan doesn't get. Um, there we go. So he's going to. Oh, we missed Fenrir's attack. Did he just roll? Did he roll all that damage pile up there? Yeah. No, he did not roll five natural hits, did he? Oh, I guess not. Okay. I'm not sure what just happened. Okay, doing the Fen Rowie thing. So it looks like three hits. And there we oh. go. There he goes. Well, this is not very good for Bohan. No, it's not. I mean, again, we got to, to be fair, call a spade a spade sort of a thing. Uh, Evan's playing like a monster. Evan's I mean, flying like an absolute... How mad can you be when you make a cool list and you fly it super well? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. So sense. what happened was Evan took it, a... It was destructive. It should have been four die. No, uh... It won't. No, he rolled four. Not five. It should have been four dice on that attack. But, I mean, it's not going to change if the damage mitigation was the Ooh. same, but we should maybe let them know that. That's a potential so two option. crits, they're shields, so it's not going to be the end of the world. It's going to probably spend the crack shot here. He's definitely going to crack. There goes two damage on Dengar. That's what you want to see. Ugh. Bowen just throwing blanks. I think that's the third time a TIE Fighter's blank. It's yeah. Unobstructed. It was unobstructed. Okay, okay, so in case anybody's wondering what happened in that quick little exchange with uh, Mahler and the crack, uh, we, we thought that it was an obstructed shot, but they ruled it uh, on the table that it was an unobstructed shot, and Bohan had rolled four evade dice, so they re-rolled it at that point. He had to spend his focus token to survive, and then, and put and then he there. ate the damage from Fen, and that's what happened there. Uh, and Dengar, you said, uh, lost some damage, or was that... Was that dead? No, that was on uh, Fenrir. Fenrir's got a crit of some sort. Yeah, he Fenrir did. took a crit of some sort. We'll get the update on which crit that was soon. Had a little confusion here, guys. Sorry. But we got it sorted out now. We're back That's on it. Track. Now, Fenrir is just in a pretty good spot here. That's where you want to see. I mean, there, I don't feel like Be uh, Bohan could do anything about that hard two ship left. He can't block it. No, then, could he? Could he hard no. two with his own... He could hard one barrel forward with his, with uh, with Mauler. So I would scorch. Maybe, but Dengar still has, can still two turn uh, right through the rocks there. Yeah, and have the range to pick Just have that range, a nice spot to be in. Yeah, but that's a right turn, so that won't be green. That is true. So Evan either has to turn around, or he's gonna have to do the one. We go do the left turn sloop. Wait, stay stressed, but you're out of the game. That's actually not a bad idea for one turn, then three bank in next turn with the unhinged to get the stress target lock. That's a great idea too. I mean, that's again what's going on here. Evan keeps giving himself all these really good options on his next turns, and yeah, I mean, that's not an easy thing to do. Like I've been playing the game for two years, and I still can't get two turns and three turns ahead, and that's probably why I'm not at top tables, and these guys are. Um, but you know, it, it sometimes is a bit easier when you only have two ships to be able to focus oh, 100%. and leave yourself those avenues. But it's also a knife edge because so much of your list is tied that's up right. into one ship that if anything bad happens to it, you just evaporate. Yeah. If we had seen like an Expertise Ray or uh, a Lawful Rebel or a Nora with a uh, Shara or any other sort of really top tier stuff that's out there right now, this would actually not seem as strong as it seems right now because the Dengar, while absolutely monstrous, only has two green die and only has Glitter Stim once. He right. actually would fold under pressure. It's just extreme expert piloting that's keeping him alive. Yeah, the maneuverability really, really hurts the TIE Fighters. And funny enough, with those lists that would beat the Stengar, I'm pretty sure those TIE Fighters would, would beat all apart. of those. That's exactly yeah. it. And we've finally gotten the game into a rock, paper, scissors thing, which means we we, we do... Uh, there is a little bit of chatter out there about how, you know, the state of the game is, is in a certain situation. It's changing. It's definitely changing and evolving, but there is no one list, one list to rule them all. I know that sometimes some of the scum stuff does seem overpowered and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. The swarm matches up against certain stuff and evaporates it. Um, the rebels are coming back with an absolute monstrous storm, and they've got some phenomenal ships lists that get can totally take down scum stuff. So we really do have a rock paper scissors meta, and that's what you want in a competitive game. So just to clarify what happened, because we're all a little confused here. We thought a black crack had shot, 
had shot uh, Fen Rao, uh, and he used the crack, so it was actually Wampa, so we just put one damage through on Wampa, so Wampa doesn't have a crit. Okay. You see, you mean Fen Rao uh, Sorry, Dengar crit. doesn't have any damage through. Oh, so one damage went through on Dengar. So he evaded it, and then That's he right. canceled the crit to guarantee the damage. That's right. Okay. And Fen Rao, the crack shot went through, and he took a damage. Okay. Now we're all sorted out. Now we know what's happening. Oh, I see. So there's a, there's a there's a beneath shield crit from Wampa. It's tricky sometimes while watching without hearing the actual game to see what's happening. Like, is it a is it Wampa? Is it a Black Squadron pilot? That was a nice barrel roll. And making sure to preserve that title with the front arc. He wants to get all getting the, out of the range. He's of getting all skirt? up in his grill. Oh. Oof! Rotisserie chicken. Here we go. Uh, so Dengar is doing the... Oh, the hard one left. Okay, that makes sense. Reform. Clear your stress. You can see where your opponent is. You can take your time, turn around. And then he's going to have a sloop, potentially. I mean, he still has a turret. He's still three dice. He still gets a target lock. He's, he can still do a barrel and pull away if he wanted. He can still just take a focus and it's fine. Everything's fine. I mean, you have Evan has such an advantageous position right now, taking a couple damage on Dengar, or Dengar being out of arc. It probably doesn't matter a whole lot. By target locking the... Target locking Wampa, that means... Probably not gonna survive this turn. Yeah, and that's exactly what he is. He's probably gonna do that one-two special again. I think he's gonna do try to pull the token off. Five damage comes through with Fenral, and that's what's happening right now. No, nope, uh, three dice. So he's using Dengar first. Yep. Target lock reroll. Hey, for Ooh. once he doesn't get max damage. Okay. Finally, uh, Bohan's dice give okay. him a chance. And here comes. Uh, here comes the painful five dice, but we're not gonna see any fancy rerolls and stuff. Uh, but he is still gonna get four damage. Yeah, I mean, four damage is what you want. Uh, space is moving around a little bit there. Ooh. Uh, did he take an evade token? He did. So thankfully, the evade token saves the day. Nice. Wampa takes two. The magic man. I mean, at that point, I, I expected to see Fen coming through just, like, flanking him and cutting down his force like a rampaging yeah. gorilla, which is what he normally does. And yep. To an effect, he is doing that, so... Dice finally decided Comes to go two dice on Dengar. Got one damage coming through, and Dengar is laughing. Rolling two, looks like. And he's gonna. Did he roll two? He rolled eights? one. He rolled one of eight, so he's deciding whether to crack. I mean, you always crack shot. You always crack. 100%. He did get an eyeball, and he can spend the eyeball. The question is, did he? if he pulled his dice away, then Bohan could crack shot. That's exactly it, because so, crack shot happens at the end of modification. So that's right. So if Evan forgot that he had the crack shot. Oh um, no, his range one shot did nothing. Ugh. Well. We're still, this is what we're talking about. We're still three dice versus four dice and a free of eight. Uh, a tokenless Wampa versus a focused up Fen Rao. But he would have loved to have seen the, the two hits and a crit or something come up for him to get a chance, right? Like, right. But I mean, at that's, least make your opponent roll That's the, the high end of the normal distribution, though, right? That's a very lucky roll if you get that. That's true. But it's a very unlucky roll to continually blank out. Well, yeah, I mean, how many times has he rolled two blanks? I think that was the fourth time. Yeah, he's, he's. Uh, I mean, it's, it's to the point right now where he gets even one paint, and I'm happy for him. Like, it's <laughs> tough. So, it's not easy. So, he should have taken Christian's dice from two rounds it's ago. It's exactly what he should have done. <laughs> he should have taken Christian's dice from two rounds ago, because that's how you win. That's how you win. Well, you also win by being good, and Christian was good, but still. Yeah, he's very good. Let's, let's not sell him short here. So, two's loop. But it is fun, fun to chirp your friends. Yeah. Two's loop <laughs> left? Uh, I think you do the hard one. Yeah. Barrel hard back one. and then boost forward because hard, of course yeah. you can. Yes, you can do all those things. And you're an arc, which means poor little TIE fighter probably doesn't survive if he shoots. So yeah, basically it's exactly that. You you basically fly him like you would fly a dash, except for the fact that you want range one instead of don't want range one. That you got it, man. Dengar's the opposite of a donut hole. He is mm -hmm. a Timbit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. That's what we'll call this version of Dengar. This is the Timbit Den Dengar. Uh, I think you, if anybody watching from outside of Canada, that you guys call those donut holes. Uh, it's the it's the circle donut that you set in the center of a donut. It's basically, we call them Timbits here because it's where they're from. They're from Tim. And yeah, they are from Tim. <laughs> they're Tim's bits. How much time do you guys have left in this? How much time do we have? 20 minutes? For 20. We have 20 minutes left okay. in the round. And you guys started almost exactly when we did, right? We just started exactly yeah. when we did. Exactly. Okay, so K turn here. take a few seconds. K turn here from Wampa. I like it. I like it. You kind of put damage through. Yeah. You catch him with his pants down. Yeah. Again, if. If Fenrau does a two-turn, he's probably escaping. I think we're going to try for a barrel roll here. 100% you go for the block. And I think that evade token was left over from last round. just didn't get cleaned up in that yep. cleanup phase. I think you definitely barrel roll. Oh, you don't barrel roll. I think he's hoping for the two-turn and which will bump. Yes. Which means Evan probably did a two-bank or two straight. I think the evade was, I'm worried about that Dengar doing a hard two, uh, barrel rolling, or maybe even boosting, and just putting a range one and just shredding that guy. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and that's another nice position as well. Hopefully you can catch him with the two turn. I knew Evan would do the two bay. Of course he did. It's what I would do as well. Yeah. I feel like with Defend Rao, every time you're unsure if you're going to get blocked, if you have Push the Limit and not Mind Link, mm -hmm. you're going to take the safe maneuver, just run away. You have so much advantage right now, why would you get greedy? Getting that, greedy is going to cost you the game. And in that situation, if you were back back in the days of running Sunderfeld, that's exactly, that's exactly how you flew in. If you were worried about being blocked, you do the two bank and you just let your boost barrel roll, and at that point, the focus that you get from the stress right. save you. And thrusters. So the only but, guy pointing right now at Fen is Scourge, who is used to scratch shot. Oh, no, he's just trying to barrel roll other way. It looks like he got it. Ooh, that's it's pretty close. close, but Scourge doesn't have... Actually, it might be a range one. Not for Scourge, but for, like, closest closest probably range one. Closest to closest might give so him the extra die. So Fen Rao would give him the extra die. And, but and then wouldn't get Scourge would be in range two, though, which would be an interesting little thing. Because that would be the dream. That's the dream. That would be the only way to potentially get damage on Fen Rao. So he's Token in range. Is at range two. Gonna grab focus here, probably. Yeah. Back or no? Oh, okay. So uh, I think you're fine. I don't think you need it. Like you definitely could barrel roll into range two. Because oh, you could just hard two green. Uh, I think you could hard one the next, next turn. turn. Yeah, absolutely. It might not be a bad position to be in. Oh yeah, hard one is even better because then he's around that rock and he can boost back yeah. boost left. So if he, if he does the barrel roll, he might hit the rock. But I think playing it safe is again the, probably the best option at this point. So here comes Dengar, uh, feeling okay on two hits and a crit. Just gonna go ahead and just hit. Why even? Why even take the K four? I don't know. All right, I guess we got three evades there. There we go. His green dice decided to wake back up and give him a chance when he only has three ships left. And this is a game of X wing. So I think he's just out. Oh, pushing that guy forward a little bit. Not going on the laser. Yeah. That looks like just it might out. Be. Ooh, I'd call judge on that one if it was me. Because so you much know what? fly casual. No, it's not that. It's just that I feel like that actually looks a bit in. To it's me, close. It's in. very close. It's close enough that it's worth using a template and getting right. black out of there. This is what you need to do. You black. need to get some damage through. Nope, I guess they ruled that. It is just out. Okay. So at least the swarm is starting to come together a little bit. You could probably hard one with the black squadron. And then hard two. two hard two or hard three with uh, Wolf of Magic. Three is Scourge. And then... Yeah. Three. Wolf. Oh, yeah. And then, and then do the... Well, then he'd be stressed still. That's okay. I think at this point you have to live with it. I think you have to live with it. It's more important to try to try to shoot Fen Rao than it is to pull the crit off. Hopefully Wampa Magic can do Wampa Magic things. Yeah. He shot once today and Wampa Magic happened. Yes, that's true. So maybe it can happen again. We like to be as positive as possible. I've seen some crazy sweeps in games before. I mean, it does happen. At some point, you would think that Evan's dice will stop being... I mean, realistically, if Fen Rao dies and... Four more damage happens to Dengar, and no more Tie Fighters die. Bowen wins. Yeah, yeah. So it's still right. It's still completely possible. He'd have two more points than Evan would have. So you never know. You only need one nice major explosion, double damage. It's it happened to me three times when I was in Wixom. I mean, my friend didn't actually die in any of those games, but <laughs> it was so pretty scary. Well, at this point, a direct hit or a, a, a major explosion, direct damage does get. That's right. Does get Fen. But I don't think he's gonna. I think he's gonna go three straight with Fen. Yeah, he's probably gonna disengage with Fen. I mean, we've, we've seen it happen already. When he knows he, when he's not confident that he's gonna. Because I think straight head out there, guys. Fair, there you go. Barrel rolls to block the hard two. Yeah, I think that's probably your best course of action. But I mean, the two bank is gonna is gonna slip away. So I don't know if you really want to do that. I think you might want more arcs and hope for the best. It looks like that's what he's contemplating right now. It's very crucial when you only have a few amount of ships left on the table that you, you get in there and you get the damage and you're not too focused on blocks. That being said, uh, Evan is really in a position to be as aggressive as he wants right now. I mean, I know yes. at this point in the game, his MOV is not going to matter. He's into the final anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we randomized it. Well, MOV will matter for where he places in the top eight, right. but he could, he could afford to be really aggro with his fan and put in the hard two because he's like, well... I'll just continue to just be Fen Rao and just mm -hmm. force you to just keep debilitating damage because I'm fairly certain the hard two doesn't doesn't bump this turn if he does it. That's what I'm saying. He if if he he could afford to go and sure. be be as aggro as he wants because then he's target lock focusing. Yeah, and then he's that's just, the five hits. It's gone. That's the dream. Uh, and then you're only taking you are you would be taking two more shots. Uh, but you know what? Again, Dengar is going to come around with that hard one or hard two, and then boost barrel. So I have to do the smart call, the easy yeah. call. Uh, he might even want to slip in a barrel or no? No. Uh, not going to make it. I don't think you'd want to chance it either. Yeah. So at this point, what do you do? Barrel back out of arc, and then you're sitting at two range two arcs? I this was... Okay, let's actually a take a second... Let's take a second to talk about how good... Uh, 
of a play Bohan just did there. That was a really great setup. Yeah. He's forcing Evan into a, a, a situation he doesn't probably want to be in now. He's going to have to focus, sure. uh, push for the focus, and just hope the title saves him on that That black squadron still has the last crack shot. Yeah. So the range one might be okay. This is what I'm saying. That was a really good turn. The hard three, the the, the dedication to not barrel roll. Um, I think maybe maybe Bohan kind of read his opponent because Evan has them the two bank in all situations that the hard two would be blockable. We've seen Evan. Maybe he banked on that and he set up this really nice setup. He forced Evan into barrel boosting. He probably didn't want to boost there. It's always important to as well to like take a second and just look at what your what did your opponent do mm -hmm. twice in this game when it was a similar situation. He did the two bank, mm -hmm. so it's probably safe to say that he's probably gonna do the two bank. Absolutely, you're in these high pressure situations. Evan's probably not like, oh, how many times have I done a two bank? Should I do a two bank again? You're yeah. just doing the safe two bank, right? Yeah. So going in there, doing a one bank, fly cash, grabbing a target lock. Yeah, I feel like shooting that guy is probably your best bet. Does he boost barrel roll or does he just... No, you just, you just turtle up. Just chill? Just chill. There's no need. There's probably not even a need to The barrel stress. roll doesn't really do anything for you except put you closer to number three and to number six. Yeah. And it looks like uh, Dengar's unobstructed on the Black Squadron. So you just... You know, I pray on Dice Gods, you kill him. Not that you need to pray. You're in an advantageous looks... situation. We're just checking just for... Checking yeah, that's for, definitely yeah, out. You're definitely out. Yeah. Okay, so... re rolling for three hits. Yeah, it's focus target lock for three. Comes four dice. Mm -hmm. Now Bohan does not want to spend his. Oh, oh! Again. That's. Oh. I think he needs to get himself some new dice. Or that a new is, opponent. That is what? The now the fourth complete blank out we've seen on. He got one of eight there with the focus. Well, okay. <laughs> Thanks. It's only four of eight too little. Yeah. Oh, he rolled, on he rolled one too many die. Auto thrusters. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we're probably going to see an aggressive turn here. Uh, a two turn with Dengar. Ship left, obviously, off, not off the table. So again, what are you doing at this point now? Do you, do you like, do you just try to chase down Fen Rao and see if you can somehow manage to get some points? Or do you just throw your last two ships at... at at, at um, Dengar, maybe try to get some MOV? I feel like throwing your two ships at Dengar sounds crazy, but it m might make the most sense, because if you go after Fen Rao, there's a good chance he's going to hard two and barrel roll and shoot you. He's, or he's going to uh, dodge away from you. And maybe, maybe you can get those shields off Dengar. Yeah. If you get those shields points. off, at least you're getting the half points. You're probably not going to kill Fen if you go after him. And in this situation, the half points on Dengar is almost as many points as killing Fen. Yes, it is. Uh, it'd be 32 points. Yeah. Uh, for Bohan, who might not make the cut, depending on how these rounds go, he's going to try to get MOV for sure. Uh, whether he makes that decision or not, is, who knows. But Of course, Evan can just hard one left. Focus target lock. Focus. Oh, yeah. Focus target lock boost for range one and say bye bye Yeah. He did spend Glitter Stim, so he's not going to be able to do that again. But I don't I mean, think he cares at this point, to be honest with you. No. He, again, he makes the cut no matter what happens, so yeah. if Dengar takes half damage, life certainly goes on. Yes. This is a tough one. This is a tough game. It's always a tough game with these fast ships versus the TIE Fighters. You can only be... You know, you know, all you can really do is put your swarm in good positions, try to take the safe shot, safe positions where you know you're going to get a shot. And that's all you can really do, try to get those blocks, but it doesn't always work out, you know? I feel like that's what Bohan was doing all game, though. I mean, he was he was playing it quite well. I he feel had... like Bohan played a very good game of X Men. No Tie Fighters bumped into each other. They mm. all stayed in a nice formation. They yeah. wheeled properly. He did a great job. It's very type of he he forced Evan into unfortunate situations, and it's just there was a lot of it's just, it's just Evan was just really solid as well in his game, making sure he was never in any dangerous situations. Yep. He he played the the smart the smart angles. He, he always had escape vectors for all of his setups. He was two and three moves ahead. Yep. There was always a lot of board in front of his ships, and that's what fast ships with PTL need. They need lots of board space. So this is another another classy. classy it's just game. sometimes you, you don't win. You know, um, some ga sometimes you have a bad matchup. Yeah, that is competitive gaming in a nutshell. You also sometimes don't want to see yourself rolling five, six, seven times, getting absolutely. He could have used some better offensive dice, absolutely. But I think the real clench thing was just Evan's ability to disengage properly, knowing when to do it, not being greedy, and some very classy Dengar boost barrel rolls, and knowing exactly where that ship ends up from doing either the barrel roll first or the boost first, 
putting herself just in that perfect position. Like, how nice was the positioning when Dengar did the two bank? Yeah. The nice barrel roll back boost gets into range one of Howl Runner, completely wipes off Howl Runner. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. I mean, it looks like the for what you can talk about is just that like that that ding that um that that whole this this whole ridiculously expensive uh, Dengar is really really cool. I mean, you don't often see a Dengar with an engine upgrade to push the limit, but Evan's making a really good case for it here. If you've if you've got the piloting know-how and the skill set, you can make a really terrifying atom bomb. Like a precise, oh sorry, it's almost like he's a tactical nuke. He's almost like, he operates much in the same way that Ben Rao does. He comes in, he sideswipes some ships, he pulls them up, and he comes out again, and he's back in again, right? Like, Evan's been knife fighting with a big base ship, which has yeah. been really, really interesting. And that's what the PTL does. That's how we, that's, all, like, so many games over so many seasons, we've made fun lists, we've made bad lists, we've all made some bad lists, even the best players. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just really the spirit of what the PTLers are. It's not even just the list, it's... So much advantage is gained from trying new things, and this is where this list actually came from. So it's a PTL list that he made just to try out, and now he's one of the highest ranked Swiss players with it. And you know what? You could take this to a system open, and this is a really good list. It's a solid list. So This is a solid list. What we try to say is that there's no such thing as a PTL list, but there's PTL pilots. Yep, and Evan got definitely it. In, in a, um Exemplifies that. that. Exemplifies that. That actually was exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. It's almost as That's if we're, we're mind-linked or something like that. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, no, but I mean, again, this is by no such uh, imagination a janky junk, like, it's not like he's trying to make Eden real good like I do, like, this is a I legit, so. legit killer, yes. I'm going for the jugular list, but it's also unique in that it's not something you see at top tables, yep. because nobody else is trying it, and that's what we try to do here, we try to find ways to force our, our, our player, not force, sorry, to, um, uh, in, encourage, thank you, encourage our players in our league to find unique setups and problems and, and come up with different things and it's a safe place to try out a potential tournament list yeah, exactly. you don't know if it's ready for the limelight oh. or not yet so focusing looks like uh, Scourge is going to take the hit and crit you got two bud nope got one evade focus so did Evan roll four damage on that one? I think he rolled four yes he rolled four damage sorry so hit crit went through He's just deciding whether or not to spend the focus or not. He got four hits. You have to spend the focus. He got one evade. So yeah, he still has to spend the focus. To he survive. has to spend the focus. Yeah. Okay, so I take a three. Uh, oh, okay. What? Okay. I don't know what happened there. I think he elected to not spend the focus and die. Oh, really? I think so. Because he's just going to return fire next round? Or I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe we'll get some clarification. Oh, my God. And there's okay, the so... TIE Fighter lives to die another day. Wampa Magic, the last ship. My favorite one. I wonder what happened there. Then maybe, maybe he... Oh, he must have already have had a damage on him and figured he was dead no matter what he did. That's the only explanation thing I can think of for that situation there. Oh, we got a little judge call here. Interesting, okay. So it looks like he just decided to not spend the focus and lose his ship. I'm not really sure what the thought process was. Um, however, though, he did flip over the crit after, and it was a direct hit. So whether he spent the focus or not looks like uh, Black Squadron? Yeah. Black Squadron was going to bite the dust. So, I mean, like, at this point now, you, you really can't do anything. You play on in the true PTL spirit. I mean, Bowman's a G. He hasn't thrown anything, and he's not acting frustrated. He's keeping composure. He's... You know, he's, for all intents and purposes, uh, he's getting, he's, he's getting, he's having a very difficult game, and he's still trying his best to provide a great yep. match, and he should be commended for it. Like, he's showing, you know, showcasing good skill still in the situation of what's going on. He's trying to give himself optimal maneuvers. I mean, it's just, this is kind of like a juggernaut of a list, kind of <laughs> chewing yeah. him off for breakfast, and, and I mean, <laughs> Evan's not pulling any punches. You know, at the end of the day, the you still one. have tiny little plastic spaceships with dice on a table. You gotta have fun, you know, you can't win them all, and even if you don't, that's okay. That's so it looks true. like he went for the block here. Oh, nope. no, no self-block. No. Nope. Just a nice clean two-turn. Yeah. I mean, Focus if he's gonna win, he's gotta win by a mile, I guess. He's, he's doing that same, soften him up with Dengar, and then, uh, and then, uh... Sure. Fenra coming. Sure. <laughs> soften up that poor TIE fighter. So we've seen two rounds with Evan, who's flown absolutely amazing. We saw him, I want to say round two versus Sharif. Who couldn't hit him with a single mind, no matter yeah. how hard he tried. Yes. Uh, he hit himself more than he hit... <laughs> he 
Now I wonder. I wonder. This is a, maybe it's a side joke, and we'll ask Evan later after that. Is he getting out because he's a new he's a new father? R- earlier this year, him and his wife were, were, were have a baby. Is he tired and parented disgruntled, and is he just getting his taking rage out his out? frustration? He's taking his rage out because he can't scream at home, so, so he's just beating people up at PTL Open. I think after this game, Bohan's going to hope that Evan has more children and just can't make it to future events. <laughs> <laughs> We'll always find a way to ship him in. So one damage going on Wampa. Who's a champion? Oh, oh it comes to Fen Rao, Rage oh. 1. Show some good dice. Come on. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead again. <laughs> he's dead again. Enough with the crits. Just stop. <laughs> stop. 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 I want to get off.